I did that scene, which TV Guide then called one of their 100 most powerful, or I don't know what the exact title of it is. is yeah, that's one of the most memorable moments. Most on memorable moments on, on mm -hmm. soap operas or mm -hmm. television or, mm -hmm. right. That's the storyline was that I was being forced into prostitution by an old f lover of mine while I was married to the town's lovely, wonderful doctor, Larry Wolick, the fabulous Michael Storm. And I had been found out by a very good friend of mine and in, in the story played by Erica Slezak, who was really wonderful. And she was the only one in town who knew what I was actually doing. And she was my friend and she protected me. And in order to protect her, because she was being accused of a murder, I had to go on the witness stand. And invariably, it came out that the reason I knew all of these things and, all, and how, how I knew she was innocent was because I was many times in the same place that she was. And so I was with a John, and I, so I knew. And it required that in this scene that was shot over, I mean, this, the actual most powerful scene that we're talking about was shot in one day and one take. But that, um, the, the story happened over a few days in the courtroom. And actually, the storyline actually began a year and a half earlier where you saw Karen lying to her husband, you saw her dealing with Mark O'Dane, um, played by Jerry Anthony, dear Jerry Anthony, who's no longer with us, and my sister Bryn Thayer, who is still one of my closest friends, who played my sister Jenny. And so everybody in the town was in this courtroom, but for a year and a half, you saw the story of Karen with her Johns and getting beat up and lying and trying to keep this all a secret from the town. And then there was this one moment where she has to save her friend, and in order to save her friend, she has to sacrifice herself. And she has to, in, for lack of a better phrase, she has to come out. And I think that's why that scene is so powerful. It's not just the writing, which was gorgeous, or the acting, but the, but, but the time period of all of those stories that coalesced in this one moment, and that people watching a person end their life as they know it, expose themselves in such a vulnerable and fragile and difficult way becomes in some form heroic. Because there isn't a person on this earth that doesn't have something to come out about. It's not a question of you know, and we'll get into this later, why I'm so inspired by the gay community, is because of their courage, what it takes to actually be the authentic person you actually are. What it's like to let go of your lies and your stories and your, um, your maneuvering and manipulation through the world and say, I did this, this is who I am. And I think that's what made that moment so intensely powerful mm -hmm. for people. It was a mythic moment. And so when that happened, subsequently, Karen, supported by Vicki and her sister, Jenny, is working to get out of the life. And I received letters from prostitutes. <sighs> that were stunning. It's like, if you can do it, I can do it. And there was, and I remember one night I was at, you know, one of those all night delis in New York and we had shot late and I was standing there and uh, this one woman was standing next to me and she said, you're very good as that prostitute on One Life to Live. And I said, <laughs> I said, thank you very much. I said, how would you know? And she said, would you like me to take you to meet some of the girls? And she took me to this elegant, beautiful house 
with all these young girls who were college students and making money to get through school, which was another remarkable experience. All of a sudden, my world was opened up in a way that I had never expected. Had I not been listening, that never would have happened. And so I then I got letters from people like this one mother, no, no, it was a teacher, actually. And she worked in a school for autistic children. And she wrote me a letter, and I think I still have it, and she said, we have this one young boy, and I think he was maybe five or six, and she said, he has never spoken. And he was walking through the day room when you were doing the courtroom scene. And he looked at the television, he pointed at it, and he said, cry. And she said, we knew that there was hope for him and that he understood what we had been trying to talk to him and teach him. So wow. that was a powerful moment. Like that, mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that really, all of a sudden I saw that what I had been talking about, thinking about wanting, longing for, was a way to create a character give a performance that would actually give away what this work that we do is about. Mm -hmm. Because I think we're in a service business, and I've said that for the longest time.